Hey, PLI teachers, how are you? I am just coming to you to show you a really cool experiment you can do with your kids about the digestive system. Now, I am a seventh grade teacher. I teach it on a seventh grade level, but you can always um, go down to a younger level. I've even taught it at a fourth grade level. So um, again, it is a really cool experiment um, and some things that I'd like to do before I actually have them do this and that is number one I usually give them a, a pretest and so this kind of gives me um, a little bit of a background knowledge of what they already know about the digestive system. Um, in addition to that I always include a material list because um, students need to have this material list all done and completed and cut out and ready to go when we dive into this on Zoom. Um, it works very well if they share their screens and you can see exactly what they're doing and you can guide every single step and I do it myself with them which I'm going to show you in just a minute. And um, also I take some time with my students to go over the digestive system to begin with. I talk a little bit about, okay, how do we get from a hamburger all the way over to here? It's completely different when it comes out of our bodies, right? Um, and I do take it to one step level, one step more with uh, a level with my seventh graders and talk about how that hamburger has to get small enough in order to get into all the trillions of cells that we have in our bodies. So again, I take it one step further and I include cellular respiration within that. Um, I do go over this information which is ingestion, digestion, absorption, elimination. We talk about those four things um, and then um, we get our materials ready for sure and then we start uh, diving into this and what I love about this Jamboard is it has pictures so whenever I start talking about for instance okay you're going to swallow this and you're going to um, swallow the, the food rather and it's going to go down into your esophagus and what is this? This is the epiglottis and we start talking about some of those things and then um, I have a picture to refer to. Um, also I, I go into to the digestion. I talk about the stomach. I talk about the acids that the stomach secretes for digestion. Um, and then I go into the small intestine. We talk a little bit about the villa in the intestine. And then I finish off with the large intestine, the rectum, and the anus. So basically, I go through all of this okay and then we have a little kind of a click and drag here at the end um, but I go through all of this and then I have them get their material out that I'm going to show you in just a minute so basically the material that um, that the kids will use um, they can have basically um, at their at their house I mean they can have this this material um, basically um, you know, from what they have at home. Okay. So, um, what you're going to need is, and you know what, I usually use this large container and I just put it away just like this. So when I do pull out the digestive system, it's all there. And so the things that you're, you are going to need as well as your students are a Ziploc bag, a small Ziploc bag. You're going to need a large Ziploc bag. You will need, um, three cups, one that has nothing done to it. Um, the second one has the bottom cut out. <clears throat> and the third one has just a very small piece of it cut out. So three cups. Um, you will need a pair of scissors. Okay. You will need also um, some crackers. Any kind of crackers will do. Okay. Um, you will need a banana. Okay. Kids are going to need a banana. They will also need water and they will also need orange juice, okay? If, or, if you don't have orange juice, uh, soda pop will be just fine. It's anything that shows acid, that has some type of acid in it. So here's how I start this. And by the way, I always, number one, make sure that their parents know they're doing this and have their permission. Number two, that they are at a kitchen table and not uh, on in a bedroom and so on and so forth. And um, also that they have everything done, cut, ready to go. So we're not waiting for, for some people to, to finish up on some of those things. There's one more thing I forgot, and that's a nylon. 
you're going to need like a knee high or a nylon cut at the edge at the edge um, and so um, I like to use this one it does um, have to be closed at one end all right um, so knee highs work really well and so here we go so what I do first is I take I take some of the crackers and I have them chew the crackers, okay? And I just say, you know, what do you notice? And they'll say, oh, there's saliva. And I said, yes, lots of saliva in the mouth. What do you notice about what your tongue is doing? And so they will say, well, my tongue is moving that food and that food actually is is moved into a ball called a bolus. So we, we talk about that, bolus, bolus. And so it goes from your, again, from your mouth and, um, you know, you have lots of salivary glands that are actually producing an enzyme called amylase to break that carbohydrate down into a sugar, okay? And so I have them do that first. And then I say, okay, well, we're gonna make, we're gonna recreate this. So this is your mouth and we're going to include a couple of crackers there. And so, you know, you go through, what do you need? Oh, we need saliva. Okay, well, let's pour a little bit of saliva into our mouths. Okay, and then I have them zip it up. And again, I'm doing this and then I'm watching them do this as well. And so what I will say to them is, okay, go ahead and scrunch this together. Okay, and um, this is going to, your fingers are actually going to act uh, like your teeth and your teeth are breaking down all of the food that is in your mouth. Okay, and so, Basically, they're going to do this and it will look like this. And then they put that aside for a minute. And then I say, okay, your esophagus, I talk a little bit about the length of the esophagus being 9 to 11 inches. We talk about the width of it, okay, and I have a little PVC pipe that talks a little bit about the width of it. But then I have them open up the large Ziploc bag, okay, and I have them take their banana. And I say, okay, open your banana and take little pieces of that banana and put it into your stomach. We talk about the esophagus going into the stomach. So now this is the stomach, okay? And so I say, okay, now you're going to take your bolus, okay? And we're going to put that right into our stomach. And I say, put the small bag right into the larger bag, okay? so you don't make as much mess and then empty it into there, okay? And of course I will say to them, well, oh, what's missing? Um, and they'll say, well, oh, we need some acid, okay? Awesome, so we pour a little bit of acid, okay? A little bit of the orange juice into the stomach, okay? And again, I'll talk about the size of the stomach, which is about the size of your fist, and it can get as large as a melon. And then I say to them, okay, well, now that you have this acid, okay, notice what's different about your food. What's different about your food? And they might say smell. Uh, they may say the color has changed. So you want them to be considering how that food changes each time it goes into a different part of the digestive system. So I call this, um, or I tell them, it's called chyme after the acids break it down into this liquidy kind of, and it does have a little smell to it, just to let you know. And so it sits in your stomach for four or five hours. So we have this here. Okay, stomach. Then I'll say, well, what's next? I'll say the small intestine. Remember Mrs. Tamer? Oh yeah. So the small intestine, I love to do this because kids are so intrigued with how long their their small intestine is. So I will take a string and I'll keep going and going. Oh, wrong one, sorry. Keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going. And they're like, what? And I say, yes, your small intestine is 20 feet long. Okay. And so they'll say, well, then why do we call it a small intestine? Why not a large intestine? And I will say that it's because the width is very small. When this, so when they're talking about the small intestine, they're talking about a width that's small. So then it gets a little bit messy. So you take your your nylon because after it leaves your stomach it goes into the small intestine so this is going to be the small intestine and so what we do is we take a nylon 
And this is what I love about this is that when they pour it in, okay, to their small intestines, on the inside of the small intestines are villa, okay? So that's where the nutrients go into the small intestine and that's where they're absorbed for, um, for our nutrients to get into our blood system to go to every single part of our body. So um, what this does is it shows it because all of the nutrients are actually going to come out of the nylon, okay? Um, and all the fiber and such is going to be left um, in the bottom of it. So it's almost like it's going through the small intestine. And then I tell them this is part of the large intestine. Okay. So um, this is our body. Then, of course, all of the nutrients will then go into our blood system and into our body um, to reach every single cell. So basically what they have to do is they have to take this. Um, and they will have to pour this into their small intestine, okay? And so we just pour that in. It's so much easier if you have a partner, but you can see what I'm doing here. And I tell them to hold, I say, hold on to that nylon. And so basically what they're going to see is when they pull this up, okay, you can see this dripping, Okay, so it's showing that all the nutrients are going into our bloodstream. And so when we get to the large intestine, I would have already talked about the large intestine. The large intestine's five feet and it's about two and a half inches wide. And so what the job of the large intestine is, is for it to absorb water. So I say you have to squeeze again squeeze all of that excess water out because now we're talking about the large intestine and this is when they love it right because they're getting all yucky and uh you know it's gross it's science right so um they're going to squeeze all of that out okay so when we do that we talk a little bit about okay so it's good to eat again fiber and um you know, good, good vegetables and, and fruit because it helps our digestive system eliminate some of that, um, some of the rest of whatever is um, not absorbed. So we also then go from there to the rectum. So you can see that we put this into the rectum and we talk about the rectum and we say that the rectum is a holding place for our feces. So what you do at that point then and always have paper towel ready too, okay? Because you can see I just wiped my hands because uh, your hands are going to get messy. And so what I do is I take a little um, a piece, actually a little piece of this nylon out and I'll just open it up with my scissors just like this. And I put it into the rectum. And from there, okay, remember this is the one that has the hole in the bottom. What I do is that I say now when you have a bowel movement, okay, then you have that coming out of the anus. And of course, they absolutely positively love it. Some of the girls are like, this is gross, but it's science, okay? So again, um, I do this with anywhere from fourth grade to seventh grade. Again, if, I, if I'm doing it in seventh grade, I talk a lot about the respiratory system, the circulatory system, and the digestive system working together to get the food and oxygen to each one of the cells. If you were doing it in fourth grade, you would make it very simplistic, okay? And just to let you know at the end, what I like to do with my seventh graders is I give them this instruction sheet it says use the flow chart to, to write down different location food travels so they would have this and basically they would go back and think of where that food um, entered where did it go from one place to the next how did that food change um, and write a brief description for each of these so I mean, I mean, Imagine this being the mouth and then finally this is the anus and everything in between. So they will go ahead and do that. Um, I probably would have them do that with a partner in a breakout room. And then I would finally conclude with this little televisit, which would be um, a, 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 
handwritten note from a secretary to a doctor, they would be the doctor. And so they would use that flow chart on the first page to um, go on to Flipgrid and do a, a taped televisit to a patient who wants to know what happens to her food when she um, when she eats and when, how it goes through her um, a digestive system. So, of course, um, I put down she's asking for the taped televisit with this information. And if you could add a whiteboard, so they would have to add a whiteboard to provide her with the visual, that would be helpful. And then it leads, it needs to be at least one minute in length. So basically, I would give them that to conclude the digestive system so they would know a lot more about it. And that was my demo. Hope you enjoyed it.